We're going to look at the brain tonight and how complex trauma affects the development of the brain. And what I want you to understand up front is what we're learning through research and all of the brain imaging that we're now able to do is that our brain is one of the most amazing organs around and it has a tremendous potential to heal itself. And so you're going to look at a lot of damage that gets done to the brain, but I want you to know up front that a lot of healing can happen as you begin to work on stuff. So if you're visiting, let me just again explain what we're about with this series. Complex trauma, we tend to think of trauma as an event that's very scary, very bad, very um, terrible for a person to go through, and just something that's horror story stuff. That is what we would call simple trauma. Complex trauma can be a series of events that are just horror stories, but complex trauma means ongoing trauma, but it's not necessarily just bad stuff, horror story stuff. It is a child that feels unsafe. And they may be in a home where their needs are met physically, where they have tremendous opportunities, but there's one or maybe two things where they just don't feel totally loved, totally accepted, respected, and so they walk around on eggshells, full of insecurity, not able to fully relax. That is what we refer to complex trauma. And so it doesn't have to be abuse. It doesn't have to be severe neglect or abandonment. It can just be a couple key emotional needs that were not consistently met that caused a child to feel on edge, on guard. That does damage in a child. And we've been looking at understanding that. There's a lot of research out there now that shows the damage in the brain, which we're going to look at tonight. And so I'm not going to go into tons of detail about it, but there's not a lot of research about how it affects how you cope, how it affects how you approach relationships, how it affects how you think about yourself. And so that's what we've been focusing on. But tonight I do want to give some attention to how it affects the development of your brain. And hopefully you'll find it interesting maybe even fascinating, and some of you will just get discouraged. One of the other things that I'm very conscious of when I teach about trauma is that traumatized people tend to traumatize others, or abused people tend to abuse others. And so many of you, as you've listened to me, haven't just thought about your own complex trauma, you've thought about how you've traumatized your kids. And that creates tons of guilt. And I just want to say again up front is that you, if you're able to address it now, are able to help your kids in a tremendous way deal with their trauma successfully so they don't necessarily go down the exact path you went down. Okay, I want to start with just a little bit of pictures and stuff that will help you get a picture of what's going on in the brain. So the first one on the left is a picture of a normal child in a fairly healthy home. Three years old. The one on the right, three-year-old neglect. Isn't that interesting? You see the little black things in the middle there? Those are parts of the brain that produce cells. And so in the case on the right of neglect, where a child is neglected, the brain goes, well, I don't know what to do. I'm bored. They don't need to learn anything. They don't need to deal with anything. They're just sitting there, nothing to do. And so their brain doesn't expand. It doesn't grow like a normal child with normal stimulation and growth. And so their brain remains small and the cell producing area is bigger because nothing is being produced. So that just gives you up front a little picture that we can look at brains and see that complex trauma does have a profound effect on the brain, just the size and the health of the brain. Okay, let me take you to the next picture there. 
If you look at, it starts at conception, and then from about three, four, five, so from conception up to age four, five, there's a really steep up, and then it starts to level off. That shows you that in the first three to four years is when your brain grows the most. That's when the most activity is happening. That's when the most expanding and learning is happening. And so if a child is in a situation from conception up to five in that key growth time, if they're in a situation where they're going through trauma, that affects the growth and the development of the brain. Now, let me just give you another thing that we're realizing within the last few years is your brain really doesn't stop growing until about 25. And then it's kind of levels out at that point and we tend to go downhill from that point in our brain capacity and our brain expansion. That doesn't mean the brain still can't develop and grow, but the main growth stuff is finished around 25. Okay, the next picture, you'll notice at the bottom, you've got a brain stem. Now here's what I want you to kind of keep in your mind is that your brain develops from the bottom up. And what I mean by that is this, we all come in to the world born with a brain stem. And that brain stem and the middle brain, they influence your heartbeat. So you don't have to sit there and think, heart, please beat, it just does it. You, it controls your breathing, it controls your blood pressure, it controls your appetite. All of that is controlled by the brain stem and the midbrain that you're born with. But the top two, your limbic or your emotional part of the brain and your cortex, your thinking part of the brain, you're not born with that developed, okay? So that develops and it doesn't just develop kind of like the same for everybody, cookie cutter. It develops based on your circumstances. So what the brain does is given the experience that the child is going through, it is saying, what do I need to learn from this experience? What do I need to learn so that doesn't happen again or so it does happen again? So that I grow, so that I change all of that. It is based on your experiences. So here's my point. If you grow up in complex trauma, guess what part grows? Fear looking for fear, anticipating fear, fight flight instincts. Those get reinforced, reinforced, reinforced because that's the environment the brain is experiencing and that is developing. That is important to understand to to know kind of why you can go from zero to a hundred in a nanosecond in a reaction And that that part is super, super overdeveloped in you. And the other parts, the thinking, the emotional, aren't as developed because you weren't in an environment for that. That doesn't mean they can't develop now, but that means they're probably undeveloped somewhat. Okay, next, let me just get you to understand, and this has been around for a while, but we have two parts of our brain. And I want to point a couple things out. So you got left brain and right brain. And a lot of stuff gets made out that men are left brain, women are right brain. And honestly, I don't buy into a lot of that. I think it's, it's a lot of stereotyping stuff, but it's really important to understand in trauma, okay? So your right brain, it develops first. And your right brain is your emotional memories. The emotions you experienced the things you sensed in a memory, it's your emotions in general are all there. It's your nonverbal world, what you sense, what you pick up. All of that is tied into your right brain. Your left brain is your thinking stuff, but it's your explicit memory. So right, uh, right brain was implicit memory. Left brain is explicit, and that means the details the time, the date, the events, who, what, where, when. That's your left brain. That keeps track of all of that. Your left brain is the thing that does your thinking and reasoning and evaluating stuff. 
all of that there and then learns language, okay? In the middle, between the two, there's this bridge, and you can see it underlined at the bottom, called Corpus Colossum, okay? Big word, I, I'll forget it by tomorrow, so you can too. But here's the point I want you to get. If you've experienced complex trauma, two things have probably happened in you. Number one, your right brain, which is emotions, fight, flight, protection, has developed a lot. Your left brain has probably not developed a lot. Okay, number one. Number two, that bridge, that connects the two. If you've gone through complex trauma, that bridge does not form at all or it doesn't form very well. Now, let me give you an example of that. A lot of people will say, I can't remember certain events or years of my childhood. That's left brain, right? Details. But what you'll find when, when you're in certain situations where you experience certain emotions, you're triggered. And you go, what's that about? Guess what? Your implicit memory on the right side is remembering something, but the bridge to connect it to the details has not been formed. Does that make sense to you? So now you've got your brain partly remembering the emotions of an event, but your other part of the brain doesn't remember the details because the bridge hasn't formed. That's complex trauma stuff. That can heal, but again, that's kind of what you're looking at. Okay, now let me take you to those early years, that zero to five years. I don't know if you've ever thought about it in any detail, but what would it be like for a baby? How much do they have to learn in order to survive and in order to go to school at age four or five? If you begin to think about that, it is really overwhelming. And so I just want to kind of walk you through three areas, but the point I want you to see up front is in that early zero to five development stage, your brain is in overdrive because it is being bombarded with everything it experiences almost is new information. And it doesn't have any framework to connect it to. So it's kind of building a framework and it's building details. So just think of a couple things. I don't know if you've ever thought about the amount of brain that's involved in learning how to walk. So you see a child, and if you think about it, just to hold your balance, to take a step and not lose your balance, your brain is developing, fine-tuning, circuit after circuit to learn that skill. And then you go to running and climbing and jumping, basic skills that take tremendous skill and coordination, and it takes a while to learn. Then if you go to language, a child who comes in the world doesn't have a previous language to draw on. So it's not like they're learning a second language. They're coming into the world blank slate and they're hearing blah, 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 blah. And that's all they hear. And then somebody one day goes, nose. And they learn that's a nose. Now they don't quite know what <clears throat> that person is pointing to, because especially if they're touching their own nose because they can't quite see it. But, but they begin to learn a word and then what that word connects to. You think of the, the English language has about 10,000 words. And usually by age five, you know about 3,000. That's a lot of learning. Then you got to learn how to pronounce them. Then you got to learn verbs that don't have pictures with them. All of those kind of things a child is doing. And then they got to learn to button their shirt, do up their zipper, tie their shoes. That is a ton of learning. Okay, so that's only part one. Number two is they're coming into the world going, who am I? And so where do I end and where does the rest of the world begin? What abilities do I have? What do, personality do I have? Am I valuable? Am I lovable? All of that stuff a child is beginning to sort out. And so they go, I'm not my brother, I'm me. And they get that sorted out. And then you move into a world and a culture and a family and relationships. 
and you have to learn body language. So when mom frowns, that means this. When mom's eyes get that look, she's angry. You learn that up, that, okay? Then you learn if I punch somebody, they don't like me very much. So I need to kind of a set of rules that punching people isn't a good idea. If I scratch somebody or bite them, it doesn't go over well, so I get new rules, okay? So you go through that, and then you go through relationships. Is it all right to cry? Is it all right to ask for help? Is it all right to get angry? Is it all right to be sad? All of that stuff you've got to learn. And that's a lot of stuff. Then you go out into society and you go, they operate differently than my family does. They seem to have a different bunch of rules in certain areas. Oh my goodness, I got to figure that out. You realize your brain is just working, working, piecing together the world and life and developing skills, busy, busy, busy. Complex trauma interferes with that development. And that's what I want you to look, think about now. So if I take that natural development and just break it into parts, okay? So the brain is operating on a whole bunch of levels. Number one, it is filtering out tons and tons of data. <clears throat> and it's important to understand this. It is saying, this is so much information. What should I hang on to and what can I discard? Okay, so if you, as a child, begin to learn that when I get a certain sensation, I got to go pee. Well, that means I get that a lot. So I should probably learn that and learn how to respond to that. And it seems mom and dad want me to learn that and they reward me for that, okay? So you're sorting that out. But then if you just get kind of a, an itch on your head, you go, yeah, that's not so important. I don't have to give that much attention. So you begin to learn some stuff is really important. Other stuff you can get rid of. Okay, go to complex trauma. The brain is saying, pay attention to fear, pay attention to danger. Always be on alert. That is really important. Look for signs of danger. That needs to be your focus. Love, kindness. Nah, if you're in a f family where there's neglect and abuse, haven't experienced it, must not be important. And so you go into life with your brain saying that's not very important. And that's what happens. Then the next thing, which I refer to, is you begin to detect threats. It's doing that. And then you begin to learn what makes life meaningful. And so you get a hug for the first time and you go, that feels so good. I like that. I want to be able to somehow reproduce that. And then you go and you work hard and you get a paycheck or you get praise and you go, wow, that feels good. Hard work is worth it. Doesn't feel like it at the time, but let's do it because it, may, it pays off in the end. So you begin developing a value system. Then you see mountains or a sunset and you go, that is so beautiful and it has a profound impact on you. And you go, I love beauty. So you're building, the brain is building that sense of what is valuable, what makes life meaningful. And then it's problem solving. How do you learn to button a shirt? How do you learn to tie a shoe? You ever thought about a, a baby learning to feed itself with a spoon? It's trying to take pablum out of a bowl and get it to its mouth. And by the time it gets there, there's like just a drop of pablum left and all the rest is on the table or down their bib or down their pants, whatever. But that is a skill and they, their brain is going, okay, how do I do that better? Now, let me tell you what happens with complex trauma is this is too hard, I quit. I'm gonna get hurt. And you want to know what happens, especially for people with complex trauma going into a new job situation? Their brain says, if I don't learn this in one hour, if this is difficult and this is frustrating to learn, I quit. And you never stick at it long enough to learn the skill because you're afraid of getting hurt. Okay, next one. Your memory, which I've talked about, <clears throat> is happening in your brain and your brain is piecing together. I don't know if you've thought about what is the purpose of keeping memories. It's the same thing. 
I'm going to remember what was bad that hurt me so I don't go it there again. So it's designed to protect you. And I'm going to remember what was good so I go there again so I have a, a good life. So your brain is trying to provide you the memories to guide you along the right way. The problem with, with this is if you think of pain and, and the problem with complex trauma is this. Nothing good came out of pain. Pain always ended in more pain. And so your brain gets the belief that pain never leads to anything good. And that sets you up to make bad decisions later in life. Because much of life has an element of pain and hardship, but it pays off. It's worth it in the end. We talked about implicit and explicit and then a working memory and a long-term memory. So a working memory is, I need to remember that person's phone number and I'll remember it because I need to phone them tomorrow, but after tomorrow, I don't need to remember it anymore, so it's gone, okay? But if you meet a hot chick, you go, I need to remember that phone number for a long time. So it just went into long-term memory. You got that? Or you say, I need to learn that this sensation means I got to go pee and I need to go to the bathroom. That's important. That goes into long-term memory. Okay, so those are the kind of things that are happening. And then one final thing is, or two final things. There's this shift in your brain. And I, and I talked about it. You go from the right side to the left side. You go from kind of the emotional piece to the left side where you're starting to think about life. You're evaluating life. You're analyzing decisions. You're analyzing options. You're weighing out pros and cons. One thing that's important to understand that comes out of complex trauma is this. You tend to be influenced more by your emotions than by your thinking. Your emotions are still the predominant force in making decisions. Now, you might say, I disagree with you. And so let me give you an example. I have had many, many people who have come to Tamarack or Finding Freedom and talked to me, and they have said, I am a thinker. And I go, I agree, you are a thinker. And so they say, teach me information. I want to learn, I want to learn. I say, I will be an information truck. And I will back it up every time, and I will fill you with information. And then they finish Tamarack, and they go, I'm not going to relapse because I know all my warning signs. I know what to do. And I'm not going to get in a relationship because I know kind of where that goes. I got it all in my head. Two months later, they're in my office. They've got in a relationship and they relapsed. And I go, I thought you were this controlled by your thinking. And they say, I thought I was too. And I says, what you have to understand is this. If you don't deal with your trauma... Your emotions at times in your life will override your thinking. And your emotions will still run the show. And your thinking, as much as you have it all sorted out in your head, will not keep you sober and it will not keep you making right decisions. And that's a complex trauma thing. And then the final thing that happens in your brain is that this metacognition is the term, but you're piecing together a bigger world than just you. You're starting to see there's people, there's nations, there's, there's a worldview, a way of understanding life, uh, afterlife, before life, all of the morals and values, my purpose in life, that's all developing. And then you're developing interest in more than just yourself and you're starting to have an interest in others. And interacting with others, that's developing. Complex trauma can interact with that and interfere with that. And guess where you get stuck? A little wee world of just me. It's all about me. And you don't grow beyond that. So you're starting to realize kind of how trauma affects a lot of the development of the brain. Now, let me take it to kind of the big thing, which is stress. Because complex trauma is really living in stress. So normally, here's what your brain does when you experience little bursts of stress. And we all go through stress. Some stress is good stress. So let's say your daughter's getting married. You're stressed out, but you're happy as can be, 
okay? So that's good stress. Or you just love your job and you're working hard and putting in lots of hours. Good stress, but it takes out of you, okay? Bad stress is stuff where you're feeling danger, you're feeling overwhelmed. So what normally happens in your brain is that limbic system on the right side, your emotional side, it's alert to stress. And as soon as it feels stress, it senses threat. I could get hurt. I could get overwhelmed and this could result in problems. And so it is on hyper alert status, okay? What then happens, it releases two chemicals inside your brain. Number one is cortisol and number two is adrenaline. And what both of them kind of work towards is they give you energy to fight, flight, or get through it, okay? So you're feeling stress and all of a sudden you get this burst of energy and away you go and you're good. That's all happening there. And part of what cortisol does is it creates also in you this less pain sensation. So you're feeling pain, you're going through tough stuff, but it kind of numbs it out and it burns stuff into your memory. Because what is it saying? Stress could lead to danger. We need to remember this. So let's put a little extra shot of cortisol so that you remember this detail. So that's why I say to people, how many remember 9-11-2001? And they, they, their hand goes up as the two jets flew in the World Trade Centers. And you go, why? I don't remember what I did the day before. I don't remember what they did the day after. Cortisol burns it into your memory, okay? So that's normal. We all go through that. After the stress is over, the cortisol levels and the adrenaline levels drop. Now, let me just add one little footnote here. If you grew up with complex trauma, guess what you can get addicted to? Adrenaline. Your brain goes, I like that feeling. I like having that energy. I like having less pain. I like heightened senses and you can get addicted to that, okay? Now, let me take you to what happens if you grow up in trauma, complex trauma, what goes on in the brain. We call this toxic stress, okay? So it's stress that doesn't go away, stress that hangs around day after day. So what is happening in your brain is, is it's constantly releasing cortisol and your brain was not made to handle constant release of cortisol. And so that, when it's being released constantly, it begins to impair your cognitive performance. So you have difficulty focusing, learning, and thinking in depth. Doesn't that sound like ADHD and a lot of stuff? That's cortisol blocking the ability of your brain to learn normally and to think normally. Another way to put it is when you've got cortisol happening in your brain, stress, you go into survival mode. And in survival mode, you don't got time to think about lots of stuff. You got to think about surviving. And so that's what's happening. Then it affects your mental health, <clears throat> sleep problems, chemical imbalances in the brain. We're now watching because of that cortisol overload that it can affect your serotonin levels later in life so you struggle with depression and anxiety. That comes out of cortisol stuff. The third thing, we're starting to realize complex trauma and all of that cortisol stuff affects physical health later on. And I put up there, thyroid, blood sugar imbalances are affected bone density, muscle tissue, high blood pressure, heart disease, <clears throat> excuse me, your immune system is lower, your ability to handle your body swelling or inflammatory is lower, and you heal slower, all because of complex trauma. Not quite done yet, I don't think, no. Nope. And then we talked about the trauma affects the bridge between your memories, I've explained that, and the final thing is that it affects that limbic system right side of your brain so it's overdeveloped. So that now you can be in a situation 
that you have no memory of any similarities in your past or previous situations, but all of a sudden, you are just panic. You are on edge. You are ready to run or blow up. And you go, where is that coming from? And that's from the lack of the memory of the explicit memory, but it's also that you have this overdeveloped part so that the slightest bit of stress, that limbic part kicks in and it says, I'm ready for fight or to flight because I have to survive and it takes a while to deal with that. Now, here's what normally happens and this may have happened to you. Let's say you're 35 years old and you go over to your parents' house and all of a sudden mom calls you a name that you don't remember since you were eight years old. And she doesn't say it nicely. What most of you would find is that all of a sudden you feel like you're eight years old. You feel powerless to stand up to mom, to say that's not right, to walk out of the house. You just sit there frozen and then you go home and you're angry, you're beating yourself up you're feeling guilty, you just go through a whole bunch of emotions. But in that moment, when your trauma gets triggered, you just feel like this powerless little child. And so what you have to begin to do in dealing with trauma is to say, okay, back when I really was eight years old, I had no place to go. I had no other supports and I had no other tools for dealing with this. But now I'm 35 and I'm learning some tools and I'm gaining some supports so I can walk away from that and say, you know what, if that happens again, here's what I'm going to do next time and learn from it. And as you do that, the healing happens at a deep, deep level. And we're going to look at that in more detail next time. But let me end with this again. Your brain, though you, through trauma, and it wasn't your fault, had a whole bunch of stuff not developed normally, it can still develop today, even if you're 50 or 60. It takes work, it takes being in an environment where you can really learn new stuff, but you can change and that brain of yours can get healthy. So there is hope, let's just pray. Father, you have made us as very complex but amazing creatures, and I just thank you. You've given us brains that can heal, and I pray for each one here that just realizes the amount of damage and the amount of work that you would give them encouragement and strength. Amen.